Do you ever face the inner critic of, well, what if other people don't like this? No, I don't consider them at all. Really? Yeah. I, something I say in the book is that the audience comes last. And I believe that. I, I, I'm, not, um, I'm not making it for them. I'm making it for me. And it turns out that when you make something truly for yourself, you're doing the best thing you possibly can for the audience. Mm. So much of why, um, if you go to the movies, so many big movies, just not good. It's because they're, they're not being made by a person who cares about it. They're being made by people who are trying to make something that they think someone else is going to like. Mm. And that's not how art works. Art doesn't, that's something else. It's not art. That's commerce. So if we're making art, we're making, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like a diary entry. Mm. So it can some, could I be concerned that someone else might not like my diary entry? It doesn't make sense. You know, it's, it has nothing to do with them. My, my diary entry has nothing to do with anyone else. What's good, gang? It's your boy, DJ T-Stomp, and I think the streets are fiending for me to uh, go ahead and, you know, have some real talk, go on a ramble session. And today, I want to talk about something that uh, if you've ever tried to do anything creative, you're going to know what I'm talking about <laughs> when I start talking, right? And one thing that always annoys the crap about me is that when it comes to uh, success advice in terms of anything creative, there's always a lot of very outdated information that you notice will get spread around left and right. And I don't know why people just can't acknowledge times have changed, right? Once again, stick with me. If you've ever done anything creative, you're going to know what I'm talking about, right? So around a couple months ago, I saw a clip of Rick Rubin talking about how to make it in music, right? And if you don't know who Rick Rubin is, he was somebody who was popping from like the 80s to the mid 2000s, right? He was a producer, uh, helped a lot with the Beastie Boys, worked with Eminem, Jay-Z, the list goes on. He was, you know, a pretty big producer, um, head of a record label too, um, but this ain't about Rick Rubin. Regardless though, I did see a clip of Rick Rubin, you know, talking about, you know, how to make it, you know, how to, how to be successful, how to make it to the top, right? And he gave the most cliche, outdated advice. And I feel like this advice was so bad that he might as well have just not given it, right? And you might say like, well, who are you to say uh, what's right or wrong? He's, he's the king of music and you're not. Well, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that he came from a different time. Now, what Rick Rubin said was, you know what? If you want to make it in music, you just have to make music that speaks to you. Just make music that speaks to you and the fans will come, right? This is like awful generic advice that I see get thrown around all the time. And this is like the quickest way to failure, right? If you make what quote unquote you want to make, that doesn't mean anything, right? What you want to make might be some like weird emo stuff that like nobody gravitates to you. Just you gravitate. It's not marketable right? You got to make marketable music. It's about serving the population, what people want, you know, not what people ask for, because people don't know what they want. It's about figuring out where the demand is, where the trend is, and, you know, getting on the trend early. Um, one thing I think a lot about was I remember back in like 2019, 2020 ish, I just started DJing. I don't really DJ as much anymore just because my time is very limited and I'm kind of down a different endeavor nowadays. But I remember at that time I had bought a cheap Pioneer controller and I would just be in my dorm room all day practicing, right? And, you know, I remember at one point I hit like six months, a year. And, you know, I was just practicing in my bedroom. You know, I was getting a lot better technically. And outside of like a couple little like apartment parties, I had never really gotten any sort of opportunity, right? And I remember there was somebody I knew who was probably like six, seven, eight years older than me. I thought they were very talented and they were doing well. Um, not as well as they could have been, but they were doing fairly well, to be honest, right? And I remember I just kind of straight up asked them for advice. Like, yo, how do I go about doing this? How do I get my brand out there? How do I get gigs? And I remember he told me something along the lines of, oh man, what you need to do if you want to really get gigs, he goes, just keep practicing. You need to be the best turntablist ever. 
you need to be hitting crab scratches and you need to be hitting combos. And if you just stay home and practice scratching all day and get really, really good, the world is your oyster, right? Now, anybody who's seen any sort of, you know, DJ success, especially hip hop DJs is what I'm really talking about. You know, that's the worst advice ever, right? Like he was telling me to stay, staying in your room, that's going to do nothing for you, right? If you want to actually, you know, make it, see some success, what you got to do is, you know, you got to go to the club at least two times a week, network with the promoters. Of course, you need to practice, but you need to do vlogs. You need to build your brand. You need to be constantly posting. You know, you got to you gotta be able to be lit enough to where if you do get an opportunity, you can sell a bunch of tickets, right? That's what you actually got to do. That's like the real advice that you, you got to give somebody, right? But of course, I was hearing that outdated, like, oh, just practice in your room. And even Rick Rubin, when he was saying, oh man, all you got to do is just make music that's true to you, right? What you also got to remember is a lot of these people came up in a very different time, right? In the time of Rick Rubin, right? There were no algorithms, right? There wasn't no SoundCloud. There wasn't even mixtape sites like that piff or whatever, right? You were force fed um, music, right? You could do what you liked, right? And then a big record label would find you. They would be like, okay, we want to believe in you. We want to take a chance on you, right? They would sign you and they would spend big bucks, right? They would payola a bunch of radio play. They would put you on MTV. They would, you know, put you in these magazines. They would do all these things. They would spend money to make whatever you were doing seem cool, right? If you were making super gangster non-commercial music, they would do whatever they had to do to market at to make that seem cool. You know what I mean? even if it wasn't necessarily what was popping at the time, right? So that strategy worked, right? But that's like old boomer advice, right? The The truth is nowadays, you just got to see the trend. You got to know how the algorithms work. You got to get the impressions, you know? And I remember somebody like Russ, for example. I remember Russ used to get popping because he used to tell people, oh, post a song a week, right? Posting a song a week is not a bad method, right? There's still a lot of value in that because for one, if you get content out there and two, you will get better. Right. But even Russ is con uh, post a song a week that necessarily doesn't work the same either. Right. Because let's just say I make a fresh YouTube channel and I post a song a week. Right. If I post a random record, let's just say I posted a song, DJ T stomp fearlessness, official audio. Right. And I just posted that on YouTube. It doesn't matter how good that song is. Right. Like I'd be lucky to get any impressions on that song. If that video gets 30, screw views. If that video gets 200 impressions, that would be seen as a W, right? Because the algorithm, it's not gonna push it, you know? You know, when in reality, you gotta not only put out the song and have it success, you know, accessible, you gotta pay for some marketing, you gotta pay for some playlisting. You actually gotta put up money to get it in front of people's eyes to see if they actually like it. You know what I mean? You're not just gonna post a song on YouTube, on a fresh channel and the algorithm. No, that's just not how it works, man. Um, so that's just one thing I noticed, you know, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that things have changed. And honestly, if you're getting started in whatever you're doing, once again, you shoot videos, you know, do your research, but most importantly, trust your gut. You know, you know what you're doing better than anybody else, man. So just really just try, go with your gut absorb the knowledge don't get me wrong but you know just try i don't know like that little outdated advice thing that's just something i've always kind of noticed uh growing up and whatnot and 23 years old now so i'm not the oldest out there but uh uh i'm not a teenager per se was, you know just something i've noticed and i felt like rambling so we're just gonna throw this on the channel it's your boy dj t stomp and i'm out peace